e ngā iwi, e ngā reo, kau te hoki o te kāinga tēnā tauta katoa. Tēnā tātou ko hui hui mai nei i tēnei peringa whare, kia ata tiro tiro ngā kaupapa ngā tini take o te whāna ora. Nā kautau rā e whakanua i a mātou o te whāna o Waipareira. O te rā ngā mihi, ngā manākitanga, tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora. Thank you very much for joining myself, Janice and Lewati in the graveyard shift. <laughs> it's pretty tough when you've got Howie Morrison trio coming up in about an hour and a half. But anyway, thank you very much. Today, um, I just wanted to share with you a little about the journey that Te Whanua Waipareira has taken in looking at outcomes. Um, it's been something that we've been working on specifically for about the last seven years. We've had a lot of ups and downs, and that's actually what I'm going to share with you today. And hopefully through our ups and downs, we might be able to share with you a bit of a roadmap for yourselves, for those organisations here who are looking at beginning or embarking on the outcomes journey. Just a little bit of a background about Te Whānau Waipareira. Um, as you already know, it is, one of the, it is actually a, an organisation that works across health, social services, education and justice. It's actually the largest multi-sector organisation in the country. Some of the information there is we do provide sectors of services across four areas. We have just over 10,000 clients. We've now been in place for 30 years supporting whānau in West Auckland. For an example, for those of us who work in organisations, we have 40,000 contracted outputs to whānau that we're responsible for achieving. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, the type of website hits that we've had in the last year, give you an insight into the size and scope of Te Whanau and Waipareira. So outcomes, our journey so far. It's not been easy. And in fact, what I want to share with you first of all is our roadmap for outcomes. Our roadmap for outcomes is something that um, we think would be very cool to share with you today. And this is really what our roadmap for outcomes looks like. In other words, it was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> I do not have a nice, dear roadmap, clear roadmap for you to follow. We had a huge number of detours. We failed to give way. We missed a lot of stops. And we had a heck of a lot of detours over the last seven years. And those are actually what we're going to share with you today about our, our, on our outcomes journey. Now, the first thing I wanted to do with you today is actually talk about defining outcomes, which Les has done a little bit of himself. For those of us who are collectives, in the last year, we've had four different outcome frameworks from four different funders with three different types of outcomes reporting systems that we have to follow. Our last one just came about three weeks ago. Not only that, when you talk about the outcomes that whānau want on the ground in our communities, it's quite different to the outcomes that funders want us to report on. The second thing is what our kaimahi need and quite rightly want to report on for outcomes for their clients is just as valid perspective. The next thing is that our management teams in Waipareira have just as much right to look at the outcomes they need for information to make sure the services are delivered in a far better way for our people. So as a result of this process, we put our hands up and said, OK, let's go back to the drawing board. We actually need to define what outcomes means for ourselves. Because at the end of the day, as an organisation, what you measure is what you value. So we realised when we had four different outcomes frameworks in place, if we spent all our time measuring what funders want, that actually misses what we want to measure for our own people in our communities. So as a result, we put a stop on what we needed to report to and all our energy for funders and came back to some basic questions about what do the outcomes mean for us. So the first step, probably the first lesson learnt from our journey, was that we need to go back to the drawing board and define, drawing board and define what outcomes means for ourselves. As you've heard today, very simply, inputs, activities, outputs and outcomes. What you invest, what you do, who you reach and the results, and outcomes are about the behaviour change. What changes occur and as a result, what impacts you make. The second thing, if you describe what outcomes you are, there are very many different types. Some relate to what you expect to see more of, which is short-term outcomes. What would you like to see more of, which is known as your medium-term outcomes. 
And what do you hope to see, which are actually your long-term outcomes? And you'll see some of the wording in there, which really gives you a good under indicator of what sort of things you expect to see. Awareness and short-term outcomes, behaviour change and medium-term outcomes, and conditions and long-term outcomes. So when everyone talks about outcomes, and for us at Waipadeta, when we've had a number of kai mahi hui about it, when we went round the room, every single person had a different interpretation of what an outcome was. So it's very good for yourselves to define what it means for, you, for yourself and look at them in three different areas. So the first step was defining our outcomes. The next step was we actually had to go back to the drawing board and paint the big picture. It was all very well getting into the detail of looking at the service outcomes, but really, overall, what were we looking at? Now, when we talk about painting the big picture, one of the things for us is that if we talked about, as I showed in the previous slide, short-term outcomes, medium-term outcomes, and long-term outcomes, we realised in Waipareira we were interested in measuring all three. And as a result of that, we looked at some of the way that we were reporting, and in fact, we were actually only really reporting on outputs and maybe one or two short-term outcomes. But in fact, what we wanted to value and measure for our own people was the long-term change in behaviour in our people because that's what we could report on as our Board of Trustees back to our communities to really show we were making a difference and impact in West Auckland. But that required a different type of thinking. That required that we needed to go back to our big picture um, thinking and say, OK, if these are the long-term outcomes that we want for our whānau, let's think differently. Up until now, we'd done three-year strategic plans. So our Board of Trustees began a hui over two years ago and part of what, what was also said earlier today is they reflected on what had happened. And in Te Whānau Waipareira now, we now have five generations of whānau going through Waipareira. And as we worked with our people, as our whānau came and shared their stories, as our board shared their stories, as our kaimahi shared their stories, we realised that we had multi-generational success stories that we were now being told in Waipareira. And it was the stories that we realised were some of the most important things that we hadn't measured and we need to be proud of and make sure we acknowledge. That significant milestone and change of thinking formed a new basis for us to look at painting the big picture. As a result, we launched last year a 25-year generational strategy for looking at outcomes. So we recognised, as a result of working with our whanos for the last 30 years, we'd seen a significant change in one generation of the changes that had happened for our people. And in fact, that's what we were there to do. So we had a huge mind shift change in our thinking. As a result, we did launch a strategic plan, and I'll share a little bit of some of the commentary that went on in that launch. We're comfortable with the manner of the documentation, uh, the passion of the people that actually put our documentation together, they actually think, love the kaupapa, um, uh, as a tribute to you, as a tribute to us. Well, it is a celebration today, because we've embarked on a new journey. Um, we've set new milestones in place to achieve it, new performances about us, about our community, where we see ourselves riding, um, and it's always going north. So if you're 50% of the prison population today, you've got to drop the volume going in there. If your people are dying of preventable diseases in hospitals at big cost, you've got to drop the volume going in there. So this plan is all about dropping ad negative volumes, lifting the expectation and manner of the people, and then ensuring that within 25 years, we, we are not seen as a burden, but we're seen as the solution providers of our communities. It's quite ambitious. It's in five-year chunks, uh, backed up by annual plans. Uh, so we'll do, and it sets targets, right? Um, dropping Māori criminality, lifting Māori education outcomes, lifting Māori employment outcomes, um, making sure families start to become more connected, more responsible to the community in which they live in. So these are all lovely lordy things, but you actually have to crunch out a plan that makes them achievable and, and uh, that you can evaluate and be measured against. Because everyone can have the nice, beautiful talk, but unless you've got a system that measures your performance against what you say you, you want to happen, you've got to make it happen. And so the strategic plan is a make it happen deal. The future changes that will uh, affect us have to do with the profiles of our whānau, the way that whānau citizenship unfolds, the way that whānau handle and manage knowledge, the leadership within whānau, and the alliances that we've heard about today, the alliances that will be important for whānau. 
as a result of that 25 year strategy, the next thing we did is I could have sat, stood here in front of you and told you that we're a provider of services across health, social services, education and justice, and these are the range of services and these are the type of outcomes that we provide in individual services for whānau. But as a result of that generational strategy, we changed our thinking and had to think very carefully, what is the overall change our organisation is trying to support for our whānau and our communities? So we had to go back to a high level and try and name what was the succinct change that we're looking at. As a result, what does Waipareta do? It supports whānau with complex needs transform their lives. We work with individuals and whānau who are vulnerable. Pipi, tamariki, rangatahi, mātua and kaumātua. We work with those who are at risk and in crisis. We bring them stability in the short term and become successful in the long term. You would have heard from Lears earlier today about a case for change. This is our hypothesis for case for change that we want to measure into whānau Waipareta. So once you've developed a strategy, you then go on to identify your hypothesis for case for change that of the community you're working with. And that's the one that whānau Waipareta has. Next thing, it's all very well saying it, but what's the model for actually putting that in place? Te Whānau Waipareta spent about the last four years looking at a model, and that's just based on, let's look at what we do now. What do we do well now? And that's something we need to duplicate and make sure we continue to provide in the futures for our whānau. The first thing is, we recognise that in the centre of any model of delivery is our whānau. The next thing is, we are to come up with some long-term outcomes. What are the big picture outcomes that we want for our whānau? They want them to be the guardians of landscapes, economic units, models of lifestyle, access points to community, gateways, gateways to te ao Māori and carriers of culture. So those are our long-term outcomes for whānau. As a result of that, what does whānau or Waipareira actually do as a model to achieve that? We have what's called in Waipareira the Whānau Order Platform. Now the Whānau Order Platform is a platform of a range of services across health, social services, education and justice. And those services meet the immediate, short and medium term needs of our whānau. So that's the first platform of services that we provide. The next platform is a new pilot that we're just engaging in. And that's called Ngā Tini Whetu. Ngā tini whetu is once our whānaus are stable, it's developing their capacity, their growth, their leadership, and then their resilience. We believe if you have a platform of services that meet the immediate, short, and medium-term needs of whānau, and then as they go on, you support them in a facilitative way to develop their capacity, growth, leadership, and resilience, you truly are in a position to start to measure the long-term success and impact of our whānau. To do this model takes about a generation to see the results, and that's based on sharing the success stories of our families that have been in Waipareira. One last thing that we need to bring up today, it's all very well having that, but you must have a system that pulls all that information together in a clear, cohesive way, so that you can measure the short-term outcomes, the medium, and the long-term together. Te Whānau Waipareira has a system called Whānau Tahi, which is sharing the journey with us as we start to develop a model that not only takes account of the typical funder reporter requirements and the needs of our kaimahi, but very, very more importantly, puts a system in place so that our board of trustees who are reported to, who are um, voted on by our community, our board and their governance rep role reports back not just on an annual annual gen general report, but they also do an annual outcomes report to our community to show how they're, how they're looking at supporting the outcomes of whānau. So that's where our Board of Trustees is also responsible for sharing the outcomes and being accountable for them back to our community. We're still very, at a very early stage of, the journey, of that journey, but that's where we're looking at heading. So this is our Mataora model. As a result of that, once you've got those things in place, then you start to ask the questions about, well, how do you measure it? What do you measure? What success do you have to measure? 
First one is there's two areas to measure. One is actually about the performance created. So that's where outcomes come in. Domain outcomes are long-term, intermediary outcomes, and service outcomes. So when you're looking at measuring success, the first section is on performance. And that's backed up by targets and indicators. Now the second area, and you will have heard a word if those of you haven't been familiar with it before, that Les talked about, and that's called SROI, Social Return on Impact. That's a different area. That's about how you measure import on the value created. So the outcomes and the value created help you look at measure the impact that you have with your whānau. One, as we all know about, is commercial value. Les also talked about today in his speech, social value, the social return on investment. I won't go into defining it today, but it's something that we have been involved with over the last two years, and we've had two of our staff go away to get accreditation overseas so they can be accredited in doing an SROI. So, um, Waipareira next month is about to engage on our first SROI in a service to see what the social return is as a result of undertaking that service in an area that we believe can be scaled up. As a result of that, the other thing is the change your organisation goes through, a huge significant change. It's one that you can't implement slowly, quickly. It takes, an hour, from our experience, it will take a good five years to change the culture of your organisation and systems and processes in order to start to have outcomes type of framework in place. At a very high level for Te Whānau Vaipareira, I'm going to summarise very quickly the change that's happened for us. We've gone from looking at data for funder compliance to looking at data for improving service performance. We've gone from single service referrals to multiple services based on a plan. We've gone from kaimahi being siloed in divisions to kaimahi supported to deliver multiple coordinated services. We've gone on start for, by clients and Fano being discharged after completing one service. We now maintain an extended relationship with Fano to ensure they achieve and maintain long-term outcomes. We've gone from being service-centric, thinking about what services we deliver, put the other hat on. What is the change and what do we need to do to support Fano? So we've become Fano client-centric in our measurement. We've gone from looking at short-term outcomes to long-term holistic outcomes. Finally, that's our roadmap. If we had this at the beginning, it would have been great. But we now can leave you with a roadmap if you're looking at undertaking outcomes. Define your outcomes, paint the big picture, name the change, make it happen, measure success, and change your head. Tēnā katoa.